Hi friends. So today we are going to see an interesting topic that is finding out the binary interaction parameter for the thermodynamic model. The model could be activity coefficient model or it could be a, any equation of state. So for that what we have what should have is a VLE data. So I've got a VLE data uh, which I have taken from Smith and Vernes. This is the data for uh, diethyl ketone and uh, an exon at 338.15 Kelvin. So we need and the pressure is in kilopascal. So we have to first fit this data to ChemCAD and then ChemCAD will uh, do the calculations and will give us the uh, binary interaction parameter for the thermodynamic model which we have selected. Naturally for that first we need to select the components. I have already selected the components diethyl ketone and an exon. And uh, I have also selected the thermodynamic model which is Margulis. You can change if you want but we will start with Margulis uh, because that is something which is the first thermodynamic model generally uh, which students come across. So Margulis though the Margulis model uh, in ChemCAD is different from what we have studied there but for knowing the equations associated with every model you can refer to the help section of ChemCAD. So uh, we can you know uh, go ahead with uh, finding out the binary interaction parameter for that we need to click on thermophysical uh, uh, you know tab then go to BIP regression now if we do not have experimental data we can regress unifac VLE so we can generate the uh, you know VLE data using unifac and then uh, the chemcad will regress that data and will give the uh, you know binary interaction parameter for the model which we, you are intending to However, that will not be based on the accurate uh, experimental data. So you should be careful about using that uh, those constants binary interaction parameter for the further study. Or in fact, if you do any simulation, you must put a remark that this is based on the unifact VLE regression. You can also use any of this which is available. So TPX data, TXX data. So TPX data is generally from ebullometer wherein you don't measure Y. And TPXY is through uh, any VLE steel where you measure uh, pressure, temperature, X and Y, all the uh, required parameters. So since we have got TPXY, we sel will select TPXY. We press OK. Since the two component which we have selected, uh, we already selected, will uh, add here for this particular regression. There could be more than two as well, but here we have selected two only. So we'll be adding those two. And this will be the starting values for uh, the constants of Margulis, uh, you know, model. And these are the bounds which are given. You can change them if you want. However, I am going with the default values. And uh, these are the uh, requirement or the, uh, you know, iteration number, error, and all those things which you can modify according to your requirement. However, to start with when you are learning, better to go with the default one and then if you need you can you know go on changing that as per your need so you need to give the information here as you can see that the temperature here is in fahrenheit and this is in psif first we need to first we'll have to you know uh, change the unit so we'll go to engineering units our temperature required is in kelvin and pressure requirement is in kilopascal so i'm doing that and then i'll go back to the thermophysical BIP regression, TPXY, I'll add both the components and I'll just go with this and now I'll have to add this. So I'll add this from this. I can directly copy this and paste it here. Uh, the weightage is if suppose you know that some experimental data are uh, not accurate, some are you know that are highly accurate you can weigh your experimental data, data accordingly and chemcad will uh, use those uh, values while they, it minimizes the error function however in our case we'll assume that all the uh, experimental data are of the same uh, accuracy are of the same importance and our uh, weighing factor for all should be same so if you don't write anything it will default make it to one i'll just press ok if I want to generate more than one BIP sets, I have to give this number, but this is the first BIP set, so I'll just go with OK. And as you can see, that it has generated A12, that is 0.9, A21, that is 0.5, and B12, which is minus 
and this is the deviation value so this is in delta t and so they have uh, minimized the error in estimation of t and y so minimum and maximum deviation is also mentioned here and these are your parameters now <clears throat> suppose you want to change the thermodynamics right so you can go back and uh, you can go to this i think i need to first change it here so i'll go to thermodynamic setting i'll make it to uh, let's say wilson one lar let's say i'll press ok and then i'll go to bip regression i'll repeat the same information red and this is again initial estimation right i'll say yes and uh, as i told you the you now i can make it to two press ok and these are my one layer parameters so it is 1.13 and 0.6 so you can you can generate this kind of binary interaction parameter for the model which you would like to generate the binary now this can be further utilized to estimate VLA data for the given system fine so i hope uh, you'll be uh, able to run or you'll be able to regress your VLA data with the help of chemcat very easily right we learn entire data reduction uh, method in our uh, chemical engineering thermodynamics ug course uh, the objective function here varies however uh, uh, the data set which you generate uh, which will be helpful to you in order to estimate the vle using those constants thank you